this side of the disc, we'll see how to diagnose and repair some examples of TBI-related problems. In addition to your own basic capabilities, we'll assume that you're familiar with the other side of this disc, as well as the throttle body fuel injection theory of operation disc. In addition, we'll refer to workshop manuals, IS notes, and the MS-1700 electronic diagnostic tester and manuals. We'll look at four different situations that relate to three engine types and four TBI systems. The 1.4 liter Bendix system, a type C engine. The 1.7 liter Rennick system, type F. The 1.4 liter Rennick system, again, a type C engine. And the 2.46 liter Rennick system. While different systems involve different engines or particular models and model years, the approach used to solve each diagnostic problem will be much the same. For instance, we'll keep in mind the six-step troubleshooting procedure we covered on the other side of this disc. You'll also see how helpful this tester can be. The samples we'll use are just that, samples. We can't attempt to show you more than a few examples of what you may actually encounter. But we can offer a few suggestions that may come in handy as you work with TBI. Use your disk controller to select the parts of this program you want to see. We'll start with an example that involves an alliance with a 1.4 Bendix TBI system. Let's see now. They said that the engine idles too high. Well, first we'll check that out and see what they meant. That's the first step of the troubleshooting procedure. Verify the complaint. So that's what we did. And the idle did stay too high. There weren't any other noticeable symptoms, so that means the second problem-solving step is covered. Determine related symptoms. Of course, a visual inspection is always in order, too. Let's take a quick look. What's likely? How about throttle position, or the idle speed actuator motor, or maybe that ECU, or... Well, at any rate, we can analyze the symptoms. That's easy. No matter what we think might cause the problem, we seem to have only one condition. The idle doesn't come down. Using the electronic tester to run a vehicle test will help analyze the symptoms, and quickly, without guesswork. After selecting the vehicle test, and indicating whether or not the car has a manual transmission or air conditioning, the tester asks us to follow certain steps, such as turn key on, and start engine, or turn off engine. The tester shows when it is processing the information it receives from its sensors by this testing message. In this case, we also get this display repeated twice. Fault 66, engine does not come down to idle at start. Now, simply turn to the Bendix Systems Tester Manual page for fault number 66. At the top, there's a series of steps we take to diagnose the problem further and to repair it. That's also part of the troubleshooting procedure. Four, isolate the trouble, and five, correct the problem. When the problem involves an idle speed control motor like this one, we could follow the tester manual step by step. Or we could check the idle speed control, also called the ISA motor, with this exerciser tool, which is a required special service tool used to extend and retract the ISA motor. It can also be used to test the operation of this motor either on or off the vehicle. All the information for this tool is covered in the MR-171 IS Note 40E. In this note, five or six steps are used to check the idle speed control motor using the exerciser tool. For example, when moving to a closed throttle position by pushing the retract switch, the exerciser light goes out when the closed position is reached. If the motor had been defective, that would have been a good way to isolate the problem. The tester manual also shows two places where we would replace the ISA motor, but 
It also shows other possible problem sources. For some, we'll be checking for continuity. The manual says to unplug the ECU cables J1 and J2 and to check for continuity between ECU pin J1C and diagnostic connector pin D211. The wiring diagram at the bottom shows where the testing points are. When that check was made, the tester showed short measured, which means we have continuity. Can you tell me what the next step should be? Check again. We checked continuity between ECU pins J1C and J1D, and the tester showed open measured, so there's no continuity. Following the chart, the next step is to check continuity between ECU pin J1C and D214 on the diagnostic connector. When we did that, the tester showed no continuity. Good. Now we have a possible source of the problem. Here it is. We discovered this wire backed out of the connector. The manual says repair open on harness circuit for ISA connector pin C. That's what we did and then checked for proper operation. End of case. Our next problem involves a vehicle with a 1.7 liter Rennick system. The customer complaint was simple. It won't start. So here it is, and it won't start. We checked it out for the obvious, but couldn't find anything. Then, using the MS-1700 tester, we began a vehicle test. When the tester showed start the engine, we tried again, no start. The tester showed fault 356. Engine failed to start due to mechanical fuel or ignition problems. At least we know there was no financial, political, or medical problems. Seriously, fault 356 means that the tester does not find a fault with a TBI system per se. The manual shows the steps we took. First, we checked the fuel pressure at the throttle body during engine crank. That was up to spec. Then, we looked to see if there was fuel flowing from the injector during crank. That was okay, too. The book asks if there is secondary ignition to plug wires during crank. No spark there, so we followed the tester manual through a few more steps. First, we unplugged the MPA, or ignition module, and checked for continuity between diagnostic connector pin D29 and pin B on the two-way connector of the MPA. There was continuity, so next, we checked the voltage at pin A of the three-way connector. Less than five volts. According to the diagnostic tree, there were only a few more possibilities. First, there was another continuity check, which showed continuity between ground and MPA pin B of the three-way connector. We ended up replacing the MPA. Troubleshooting step five, correct the problem. Case closed? What do you think? That's right. You forgot step six in the troubleshooting procedure. The sixth step is to perform another vehicle test to check for proper operation. We found another problem. Fault 393. O2 sensor reads lean. A second problem. Good thing we checked. Here's an example of when you might use state display to check engine operation under various running conditions. 
If you haven't done so, be sure to check your manual or watch the portion of the other side of this disc that explains state display. To use state display, simply advance the tester by pushing the Y switch until you reach the type of display you want. Whoops, <laughs> we went too far. We could get back to O2 sensor by pushing the N switch, but we'll show you a few more of the displays available. There's air temp, map sensor, barometric pressure, TCS for closed throttle switch, WOT, and about a dozen others. But back to the O2 sensor, since that's what the tester manual says to check at mid-range throttle. We want to see if it stays lean or switches between rich and lean at about 2,000 RPM. It stays lean. If it switches from lean to rich, you should try mid-throttle again. The tester manual says to check the O2 sensor reading next while disconnecting the vacuum hose from the MAP sensor. It's still lean, so we turn the engine off. Now we have to unplug the ECU and the O2 sensor. We showed you how to disconnect the ECU on the first side of this disc. The tester manual also covers that. It's simple. So is the oxygen sensor. To check just which component is which, use the wiring harness illustration for the fault you're working on. The next step is to test for continuity between the O2 sensor connector and pin number 35 on the ECU connector. Well, we have continuity. It says, test ECU. Remember, the Rennick systems use an adapter for this. We covered how that's done on the other side of the disc. Check there or in your tester manual if you're not sure how to perform an ECU self-test. In this case, the ECU was fine. That's generally the case. What that means is that the O2 sensor is bad and it should be replaced. Of course, another vehicle test is necessary to see that everything's finally in order. But now, it's time for a quick review. Use your disc controller to select your answer to this question. You're really paying attention. Sorry, watch this again. In this problem, we have a vehicle with a 1.4 Rennick system. The complaint was that it shakes at idle, whether it's cold or warmed up. In both cold and warm, it really does shake. You could feel it. A vehicle test with the electronic diagnostic tester produced this message. Fault 390. EGR EVAP inactive with hot engine. The tester manual page for fault 390 looks like this. The diagnostic tree says to measure voltage on D210 for a momentary more than 5.0 volts during a wide open throttle stab. The diagram at the bottom of the page also helps locate what we want to test. We found less than 5 volts. So the next step is to unplug the EGR EVAP solenoid and measure the voltage on the orange solenoid supply circuit while the car idles. We got over 5 volts. Next, we check for continuity across the two pins of the EGR EVAP solenoid itself. There's no continuity, so we replace the solenoid. Why did we do that? Let's check. No, we didn't. Nice try, but no cigar. Try again. Our next example is one that came in with a complaint that the engine runs rough. How would you approach this situation? You can help make this diagnosis. Use your disc controller to answer. Let's just see about that. You might, but there's a better way. Try again. One, we verified the complaint by starting the engine, and it ran rough.
This also gave us a chance to determine related symptoms, step two in the troubleshooting procedure. We didn't notice anything else, so we used the electronic tester to run a vehicle test, which indicated fault number 359. No change in map reading at start. The tester manual says to begin by checking for vacuum at map sensor vacuum hose. We didn't even have to check the vacuum. There's a hole in the hose. This one was easy. We replaced the hose, and that should have taken care of the problem. But another vehicle test to check for proper operation produced the same fault, 359. Well, back to the manual. By now, you can probably follow this diagnostic tree pretty easily. So, what should we do first? Try again. With the key off, unplug the map sensor and check for continuity from the map sensor harness pin A to ground. You might check the wiring diagram at the bottom of the page to be sure of the right pin. If the tester shows continuity there, measure the voltage at the map sensor harness connector pin C. We got more than five volts. We continue to follow the diagnostic tree by unplugging the ECU and checking for continuity from map connector pin B to ECU connector pin number 33. The tester indicated there was continuity. What's the next step? Again, you may want to check the tester procedure on the other side of this disk or in your tester manual. And remember, we use an adapter with the Rennick system ECU self-test. Our ECU tested out fine as usual. The last step on the diagnostic tree was to replace the map sensor. And the final step was to run another vehicle test to confirm that we did correct the problem and to check everything for proper operation. And that's it except to remind you of additional parts and service training courses available to you at all AMC Jeep Renault training centers, as well as at some vocational schools across the country. I hope you found this throttle body fuel injection program to be both practical and interesting. And I hope you'll use it as you continue to work with these important TBI systems. Again, your talents are what finally count the most. So we're counting on you. Thank you.